What's happening, people, and welcome back to the Ram with Dad podcast. And today I am joined by Dennis the Menace Frimpong. How's it going, brother? Oh, good, mate. The last couple of weeks of camp now, so uh, just itching the fight. Knuckles are getting itchy, shins are getting itchy, elbows are getting itchy, knees are getting itchy, you know. So I'm ready to wrap them around someone's chin. I thought Very your fight was cancelled, mate. What are you talking about? <laughs> I got a lot of people with that. You know what's mad, yeah? <laughs> I think I got more people interested in the fight than, uh, than when I originally announced it, so. <laughs> See, when I got up in the morning, mate, I fucking, I mean, jumped on my phone, just had a little flick through, and I seen it with a big X through it. I was like, fuck off, no way. And then I clicked on it. And then halfway through reading it, before I even got to the bit where it said April Fools, I was like, hang on, wait a minute, it's April the 1st, and it? I was like, you <laughs> dirty bastard, mate. I was like, uh, no listen, fucking chance. They, they, they don't call me the menace for nothing, you know? But, yeah, uh, mate. No, I'd say there was a few people that were that were happy to read that. Yeah. Well, one person in particular that might have been happy to read that, which is Callum, but um, unfortunately for him, I'm not injured. I don't pull out of fights. I only... Um, I only, only pull, pull out, out the bitches, is that what we're gonna say? Yeah, I fucking knew that was going. Yeah, you know them ones. Yeah. But um, no, I don't even do that anymore. You know, yeah. <laughs> I just, I just go for it, mate. You're Irish, mate. You gotta go plant that seed, brother. You know what I mean? You guys are <laughs> fucking everywhere as it is. The, the potato seed. Yeah, mate. I come from an Irish family myself, so I know what you are like. You're a fucking wild. You know what I mean, you come through the generation of my family. It went from being like 13 kids and it slowly got to less. The family's a big bro. Do, do you know what that was? That was the Catholic Church having such a big impact on Ireland and Irish mm-hmm. politics that condoms were illegal. Abortion was illegal. Yeah. Um, so every time you had sex, you're basically taking a, a risk. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, so, yeah, people just had bare kids. That was it. I don't even know how people fucking survive, to be honest with you, mate. When you're even looking at it now, I mean, times are tough now, but never mind what they were like back then. Hey, you know, you had so, kids. so the issue was is that you had 13 kids and maybe eight of them, six of them might survive to be 10. You yeah. know what I mean? Because you had tuberculosis. People don't understand. Ireland was a, essentially a third world country up until mm-hmm. maybe the 40s or 50s. You know, people were leaving and emigrating. And yeah. It was a good film, a- Angela's Ashes. If you ever get a chance to watch that, it's a, it's a brilliant film. It just sort of displays life in Ireland in like the mm-hmm. early 1900s. Like it was, uh, it was ghettos and slums, you know what I mean? Yeah. For the most part, obviously you had the, the rich and the elite, but, um, yeah, a lot of people lived in, um, less than ideal conditions and mm-hmm. you know, they couldn't afford TB vaccines and stuff like that. So, yeah, man. I mean, Angela's actually, that came out quite a while ago, didn't it? Yeah. yeah film. Think... Was it a book as yeah. well? I feel there was like a book. Yeah, yeah. There was a yeah, book, yeah. and then they made they made it into a film. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. I've not seen that. I need to go and have a look at it. I think I might have actually like seen the book a little bit when I was younger, man. I think we might have covered it in school or something like. But mm. yeah, I need to go back and have a little look at that one. Seen that Belfast movie, mate? That was fucking brilliant. That how they captivated Which one? like that. The Be- Belfast. Belfast. Yeah, you seen that one? I haven't seen it. Just going through the troubles, mate, and everything that was going on during the time, and obviously looking at the two sides and just telling the stories. But it was following like one family through it, mate. But just how they how they captivated that like that moment in time. You know what I mean? It fucking yeah, really nailed yeah. what was going on in Ireland and with Northern yeah. Ireland and everything at the time, mate. It was wild. But anyway, that's not what we're here to fucking talk about. We should have been joined by the fucking Shemrock. That's what I was going to get you boys on about. Right, what we call and use a dynamic duo going on here. Is it going to be fucking? Like um shem shem ping or fucking frim rock uh, or what's going on <laughs> it, 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 it can be it can be den rock it can be shem pong yeah. it can be you know oh i don't know mate there's loads there's loads of combinations to make there but mm-hmm. all i know is we're two uh we're two mongrels we're, you know call us the mongrel mob there you know because we we're we're, we're, we're we're two mongrels here to take over you know yeah. uh, he's moved down to featherweight he's left the lightweight division open for me to take over so mm-hmm. yeah we're gonna we're gonna have some fun stefano I'd... tried to run away and uh i i you know i sent shem after him so uh, was that grabbed him by the ankle and picked him back mate how, how did you two meet then how did you like fucking come together um during covid you know um was it yeah yeah, we just, uh, I was sent a post to his, or a story of his, when he just moved to Ireland, uh, due to COVID and stuff, mm-hmm. and um, he was looking for grappling rounds, because um, obviously nowhere was open and that, Yeah. so I said, yeah, like, uh, I'll, I'll come roll with you, 
at the time I was actually going to the uh, George Floyd protest in, in Dublin. Mm-hmm. A really nice day out. So I just brought like a little um, not like a like a little blanket, put it down in in uh, in the park, and we had a few rows, and he was really good. So from that point, he told me that like obviously his situation with SBG, stuff like that. I said, well, look, come down to DCA. You know, no one's ar- no one's gonna be arsing there that you're on the run, like. Um, yeah. And uh, you come in, um, yeah, and just yeah, I fit in perfectly into DCA there. You know the group of lads that we had in there, and um, and from there, you know, just obviously at the time I was just a jiu-jitsu guy. I was only training in DCA to do a bit of striking because it was the only place open, yeah. just to keep me head me head right. And um, through him, and like obviously realizing I was a pretty good striker as well, even just from the short period of time I'd been doing it. Um, yeah, I I sort so slowly started thinking, why am I paying to do jiu-jitsu tournaments uh, all the time when I could be getting paid to do MMA and yeah. um, that was it then, yeah. How long were you, were you uh, taking jiu-jitsu and doing the tournaments for then? Um, so I was doing jiu-jitsu probably about four years until COVID mm-hmm. happened. Um, I was kind of like, I did a few months and then stopped for all about a year. Right. And then um, my mate, my one of my best mates actually had a kid with a Brazilian bird and he was going to Brazil um to visit the family and stuff like that so i said oh i want to go to brazil as well so I, i've gone with them and uh kind of retook up jiu-jitsu over there refound my love for it um you know obviously being in the home of jiu-jitsu as a, like a white belt for basically a fresh white belt and like having good rounds with people and i realized like i'm actually pretty decent at this and then when i come back yeah. from brazil i started competing yeah so that would have been like 2018 maybe right okay. um yeah 2018 summertime was my first tournament i done at white belt and then from there it's just been yeah slowly but surely building into mma i sort of always saw my path going into mma to be honest but yeah um i, I at that point i thought it's a bit too late for me to start mma or something you know obviously i had a lot of naysayers around me as well saying ah mm-hmm. forget about mma it's too late for you to start blah 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 then as I had more and more success in jiu-jitsu and I was paying to do these tournaments and losing out on money nearly doing jiu-jitsu, um, I just said, nah, let me just, let me try it, you know what I mean? And yeah. here we are now fighting on the, the biggest stage in Europe and uh, that, that's it. And that's it, that's history, mate. Yeah, I mean, so you always had an interest in the striking aspect as well, I suppose, and that's what led you into it. But how, how old were you when people were being like naysayers? Because yeah, that um, seems to be a, a cultural thing for the UK and Ireland, mate. Is everyone around you just goes, fuck you, you're not going to do that. Go and get a pr- real job and just live your life. Yeah. It's, like, it's mad, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, especially in, in like MMA, um, you know. But I think in, in most sports as well, if you think about it, like how yeah. many sports do you think you could start at the age of... Like I had my first amateur fight when I was 26. Right, okay. You know what I mean? Um, mm. So... Like, how many sports could you start? In fact, I wasn't 26. I was 27, I think, yeah? Um, so, like, how many how many um, professional sports could you start mm-hmm. at, at your amateur career at the age of 27? Yeah, not and that then, And then within two years, be a pro and, you know, be a good pro. Uh, you know, I, I think in terms of the training I do and the people I train with, I think I'm a high-level pro. Mm-hmm. You know, I train with top top guys and on a global stage and people will see that soon you know there's people coming up in manchester top team as well besides yeah. myself um so yeah like fighting's just it's an innate thing in human human beings you know like i don't think you could ever start football at the age of 27 and become a professional you know what i mean like you need to yeah. be doing it from a kid go through the yeah. academies all that kind of stuff but fighting's fighting, you know, it's not football, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I mean, there's also that, like, fucking dog there. Sorry, mate. He's got a brain tumor of a mad fucking gag reflex thing, so he takes steroids in that forest, so he does this mad noise all the time. But, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. Uh, he's getting on. He's got two to four months, I was told, but he's cracking on twelve uh, to, uh, to 12 months now, yeah, I mean, so he's fucking killing yeah. it, mate. What a staff. He's solid, bro. He's just, like, working yeah, his way through keep, it. Yeah, keeping it, keeping it going. It's a strong staff. That's it, mate. But, uh, yeah, like, with football, there's there's the, I don't know, hierarchy, the elitism to it. You know what I mean, like you say, you need to go through the academy. You need to do this. You need to do that. You need to jump through these fucking hoops if you wanted to go and be a football yeah. player. But yeah. with MMA, it's just, so, like, there's so many different people. You even find that with jiu-jitsu, like, when you go onto the mats. People from all fucking walks of life on those mats, mate. It's not just, yeah. like, 
they just love football. Yeah, you know? I mean, they come from yeah. fucking all over the place. It's wild. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, don't get me wrong. Some of the elitism definitely is starting to creep into MMA as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, people getting fed bums just based off the fact that they sell tickets. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, people getting easier routes in their career, let's say. Because mm-hmm. um, realistically, and don't get me wrong, I, I've called for the hard route. You know, I've called for the hard route. But when you look at certain other people that um, that were on Octagon Challenge with myself, they haven't been given uh, as hard of a route, let's say. Mm-hmm. So, favorable matchups. Fa- very favorable matchups. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm fighting a guy who's six and two. Last fight, I fought a guy with thir- 30 fights. Um, other people are, are getting, you know, fighters of, of a similar level and a similar experience base and whatnot so but it is what it is you know Mm -hmm. everyone has their own journey and uh this is the thing even with elitism you know with it with elitism in football you just get left on the bench if you're not like uh with with elitism in mma i get the chance to go in there knock out a lot of people and and prove them wrong once again yeah you know i think i think uh being the menace that you are as well also puts that light onto you can see it with your social media numbers mate yeah i mean you bring the punters in anyway for fucking sure and that but you, were you sitting in the gym now, mate? I can hear all digging in the background, like you know I mean? yeah. The there's people, to work people yeah. doing. I, I'm just up. I'm just upstairs now. But there's lads. Right, okay. uh, there's lads doing pads and that downstairs. Yeah. Right. Well, you've been working on that. Armin's there with you now as well. in Manchester top team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been here Crane. for about, about a month and a bit now. Um, right. Okay. Getting on well. Just, just after, uh, just after Newcastle, was it just a chat between you? He said, "Yeah, I'll come over there and fucking um, jump." To in. be honest, mate. I'll be honest. Yeah. No disrespect to his old gym, but he trained in a gym where he was probably the best guy, most experienced guy, the only pro. Hit, hit the roof. Um, yeah, literally just hit the ceiling. And yeah. I said to him, look, mate, you know, you need to get out of the dock. You need to get out of your comfort zone mm-hmm. and come over here. Like in terms of bantamweights, featherweights, lightweights, we've got so many bodies for you. Yeah. Um, high level coach and high levels of facilities. I think even just in terms of quality of life in, in Manchester compared to to Ireland is way better, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, he's been doing well. He's been doing well, you know. He's 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 a he's a good he's a good kid. He's still only young, you know. Um, he's a lot better than his record suggests. I was in the same position myself, only two on paper, but yeah, you know, records are for DJs. We don't. Uh, we not don't, sitting, not playing those, you mate. Know. You're only. You know what I mean. You exactly. take it fight to fight, and you can always prove yourself right in the next one. It's not even uh, not even something. He's always learning. That's what people like. A lot of people probably hang up on the losses too much when it's like it's not really a loss. You've learned something there. Take it into your next one and keep pushing. That's what I love 100%. about MMA, man. One hundred percent. And you have to think as well. His first pro fight was on Octagon. Yeah. Where a lot, like I said, a lot of people on the UK scene, particularly, you know, they they fight six, seven Brazilian journeymen who are basically coming in there to lose. Mm-hmm. Um, they know they're coming in there to lose based off the fact that they're, you know, that person sells tickets. So yeah. promoters get them on. They know they're going to sell 150, 200 tickets, whatever it is, whatever it happens mm-hmm. to be. Um, and they, they build people up to be something. But I think that getting those losses early, getting those hard fights in early, it, it builds character and it builds like if you want to be the best in the world like what's the point of not fighting some next czech guy or you know what i mean like if you can't even be the best in europe then you can't be the best in the world do you know what i mean yeah. because there's a lot there's a lot more outside of europe as well so yeah 100 percent, man i think the european scene uk scene all of it's kind of coming together a little bit more now than what it was yet and previously obviously ufc reigned like superior they still do you know i mean the, the top promotion of the world but yeah everyone's like everyone's bringing it up a level a little bit now yeah i mean it's changing yeah. and you can see it yeah. happening yeah i mean they've been going the longest haven't they you know yeah so that 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 is a big factor um i don't think that domination will last forever the sport's only a new sport you know what i mean so um yeah you know it's it's uh I, i'll be honest yeah, i'm not really arsed with ufc i want to be a world champion in a big organization and a dominant one yeah and then you know, if I don't, if I, if I never get to the UFC, then maybe people will discuss me like in the same breath they did as Ben Askren or Michael Chandler 
and it'll be a thing of like, oh, like he's so good. Why is he not in the UFC? He's the best person outside of the UFC. Blah blah blah. And then maybe they'll bring me in when I'm a bit, you know, a bit older, maybe. But you know, yeah. as I said, I start I started pretty old anyway, so mm-hmm. I don't expect to be there rapid. You know, I'm not doing this sport since I'm five, six years old, like some people are. So um, there's some people that have almost been raised from a pup to be yeah. in this sport. I jumped in this sport late and uh i'm i'm beating the fuck out of some of these guys so mm-hmm. can't complain with that can you mate yeah i mean and obviously that goes like you were saying before about you joining at 26 see some of these kids coming through now mate they're fucking lethal and that's only going to keep growing and growing and growing but that's them like you say getting into it from a very young age being surrounded yeah. by it all the fucking time yeah. and yeah webbing it i mean i mean like mate like i said fighting's fighting you know some people can fight and some people can't fight and yeah doing it and experience and all that helps but look at francis and Ghani, mate you know mm. what i mean look at alex Volkanovsky. there's a lot yeah. of guys that have started the sport late uh, it's not a sport like like other sports you know um if you looked at the amount of years they've been training and all that when 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 Ngannou fought over him really over him should have battered him bro he yeah. was he was over him was like a K1 champion while Ngannou was probably digging digging mines. Yeah, 100%. do you know what I mean? Like, and and then he just sent him into orbit. So, end of the day, I think some people are meant to be warriors and some people aren't meant to be warriors. And some people maybe force it. You know, maybe their parents force it a little bit. And yeah, who knows what other factors come into it? But um, mm-hmm. I think I'm 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 meant to be a warrior. Yeah, mate. Yeah, you know what I mean. You've definitely got the personality. You've definitely got the skills, mate. You've only been doing it for X amount of years, and you, you're clearly showing it too. You know what I mean? So you're in the gym now. What, what, what have you got planned for the rest of the day? What's it looking like? Uh, we had a bit of a grappling session this morning. Uh, did some pads. Got a bit of lunch into me. I've got a few little interviews now after this some, one. Some more and of that then, venison uh, steak, mate, or what? Ah, uh, that's later on, mate. That's for dinner. Oh, fucking um, I love that, mate. Honestly, I don't know how you eat that stuff. I fucking can't stand it. I tried it a uh, couple of times. I'm like, nah. Delicious, mate. You know what it is? It's lean. It's lean. I know. I know. It's really good for you as well, mate, but it's just yeah, like, fucking yeah. nah. Yeah, I, I depends how you make it, mate. I, I, I'm, uh, I consider myself a bit of a culinary expert at this point. So. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. So I've got a bit of training later on in the evening as well and today's a nice light day so I'm not too crazy maybe use some right, heat so. acclimation a few baths yeah right, okay sweet sweet so were you just head down to birmingham on the day then or were you like day before two days before obviously uh, bro, cut bro, the probably gonna, whatever. yeah they're probably gonna get me down a couple of days before maybe like the thursday or the wednesday whatever they decide and then i'll pop down do me media obligations yeah you know like a professional do everything i need to do Mm. Uh, make weight again like a professional and then show up on the day and um, absolutely butcher this guy you know another like kid an that's been that's it you know uh, like another another opponent who's been doing it for years you know had already had three four pro fights and 10 amateur fights before i even had my amateur debut mm. and uh, here we are fighting each other on a big stage now and yeah. when he gets knocked out then what can they say you know obviously the haters will have something to say still but I think there's not much anyone anyone that knows what 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 what's what they uh, they won't have anything to say. Yeah, that's it. Mate. I mean, you're always gonna get hate uh, the haters no matter what you do. Right? Doesn't matter what the fuck you go out there and do. There's always gonna be somebody that's gonna shit on it somehow. Right? And that's just the world we're living at the moment. With the internet. If you, if you don't hey, if you don't have any haters, you're doing the wrong thing. That's it, bro. You know, that's what I always if, say. If, as ev- well. if, ev- if everyone loves what you're doing, you're you're not doing it right. Hmm. 100 percent. so what you cutting weight mate do you need to cut much because you're a you're a fucking big cunt mate for <laughs> cutting about it's yeah, a lightweight i'll tell you that the weight cuts are fine i think the mm-hmm. 70 kilo I, you know when i was on octagon challenge i done it twice in two weeks right Easy. okay um to be honest i could probably do featherweight if i got paid enough uh it, but it would involve me being really strict oh, and probably only doing three fights a year or something like that That's where i like to stay that. active so I don't think it would, you know. I don't think it'd be like, mate. There's there's featherweights in my gym that walk around here pretty much the same weight as me. When I right. when I'm not blown up, you know, like if I'm if mm. I'm on it, and if I was getting paid well, I'd be on it all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so yeah, like uh, they they walk around the same weight as me, sometimes heavier, and uh, mm. yeah, I think I could do it. You know? Right. Um, 
but we'll see. That's for down the line, down the line. You know? So, have you got a nutritional history? Did you just like coaches in the gym that help you with stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, Yannick McGee, Yannick McGee Nutrition, shout out him. Uh, best in the game, mate. He, like, weight cuts are so easy with him, mate. Like, I, uh, I'm well fed, mm-hmm. everything's done scientifically. I have like yeah. my handful of jelly beans, um, you know, the Thursday before I start weight cutting, you know, um, so it's never too grim. Um, yeah. Obviously, weight cutting is never fun. You know, you're yeah. dehydrating yourself, but yeah, it's it's fine. You know what I mean? People complain and bitch and moan about it, but at the end of the day, like, you're only complaining if, uh, if you're a bit of a bitch. To be honest. <laughs> it's part of the fucking job as well, isn't it? You need to get it done. Turn up on weight, and then that's you, mate. Get the, we, job, we, get the job done. We, you, can... you know, we, we all have to do it. If you don't want to do it, jump up a weight division, you know what I mean? So. Mm-hmm. Would you ever consider going up a weight division? Like I say, you're a big fucking dude, mate. How tall are you? I'm I'm six one. You're taller than me, I'm sure. I'm six three or so. Yeah, um, well, you're fucking taller than me, mate. Like. But you know what, mate? Like welterweights are big, mate. Like yeah. you know, stocky, I, I've stocky. Cons- stocky I've, yeah, 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 I've considered it at times, and then I've seen like the likes of Malachi, and I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, he's fucking big, mate. I don't know about that, like you know. Yeah, quite happy. I like, I, 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 yeah, I'm happy bullying these. Um, these lightweights and like i said I, I if anything i might go down to federate yeah. and bully them as well you know mm-hmm. what i mean so yeah you would take the power with you anyway mate yeah, i mean you'd be cracking some chins if you went down to featherweight like but... it's it's all about leverage and accuracy anyway isn't it so. yeah and obviously you like to fight at range and look for those shots you know what i mean so that's uh that's the game plan going in so how, how are you feeling about this matchup then mate because obviously you, you didn't you didn't want a uk fight you know what i mean you wanted one of these czech boys or yeah. anybody else I, I, but I said it after I said it after the George fight. I didn't want to fight any more English guys because I think for us to really become stars in the UK and Ireland, and then because, like you said, we have the UK and Ireland societally and culturally, we have this sort of um, I won't say negative outlook on things, but almost like uh, uh, they'll support you if you're if you're mm-hmm. off doing things abroad. Like, you know, yeah. if me, George, and all these guys went off and started fighting in the Czech, fighting in Germany against those guys and winning, then people in the UK and Ireland see it and they're like, oh, right, he's smashing over there. And then when you come back over to the UK and fight, it's like you're a star. So 2,000 people will come and see just you. You know what I mean? Where, you know, pitting us against each other in our own home, come country you know we're down the road from each other it's not it's yeah. not ideal but it is what but it is it's like causing division where before it's like bringing the islands together in it yeah you know i mean and yeah everyone yeah. back at so, each other uh, and had that yeah but but look, listen it is what it is you know um mm. i i don't make those decisions i just got given a guy i signed the contract fair play to him he signed the contract yeah um so he's just got to get taken out um but I, I, after this guy like i expect the check guy you know, these checks need to stop running for me, to be honest, because uh, it's not looking good for their scene. Mm. If if they're running from a guy who's officially two and two. Yeah. You know, they get some mega, mega, mega shows over there as well. You know what I mean? Going into the football stadiums, going up at 55,000 seater that they'll be moving into, mate. That'd be fucking epic. That'd, fucking be, uh, that. that'd be a shout. And I already mm-hmm. have my walkout plan for that. I already have hopefully an opponent plan for that. Or a couple options anyway. There's a few nice Germans right. I'd like to fight. So, mm-hmm. yeah, get 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 this out of the way. Uh, maybe one more fight before then, and then uh, yeah, we'd be looking at October. Yeah, jamming, mate. So obviously, just back from uh, Stoga as well. I would probably pronounced that and absolutely butchered it, mate. But had so you were you travel flew over there, didn't you? Had some travel delays getting over. I think loads of people had travel delays that weekend. Uh, like, but... I don't. I don't even know if we had travel delays getting over. They lost my luggage going over on the layover. Brilliant. Uh, I only just got it back yesterday. Um, You're joking. Yeah. So basically, they've lost my luggage. They've sent it to the hotel. Hotel never told me. And then I've come back to the airport. Like, yeah, did my luggage ever come? And they were like, yeah, we sent it to the hotel. And I was like, well, I can't go back to the hotel. My flight's back. So they've had to go back to the hotel, get it, send it over to Manchester, and then it come to my house. I was in the gym. The fellow was like, oh, I can't, I can't just leave it here, blah, blah, blah. So I've had to ring the airport. It's, it's just been a, anyway, yeah, been long a story like. short. Yeah, yeah, it's ball like me. But long story short, yeah, we went to Stuttgart, absolutely harassed everyone. 
Um, you know, my, <laughs> my, my press my, conference was wild, bro. Mate, uh, my, 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 you know, no, it's forget about the press conference. You'll see when the vlog comes out. Check out Shen Rock's uh, YouTube page. There's going to be a vlog. Right. Um, you know, I had my big Irish boss swinging around the place. Um, you know, these, you know, you had a, that bum chin fellow over there in the Fuka trying to start fights with me when he knew full well that like it would just get broken up. Like, what, what's he going to do in a street fight? Double leg me, like, do you know what I mean? And, yeah. And of course, he had Akon trying to shout over everyone at the press conference because he has no vocabulary decorum. Um, you know, he, he can't actually string a sentence together without mm-hmm. sound effects or mentioning something about lightsabers. So he was just trying to shout shout over everyone. But I think it just made him look like even more of a fool, to be honest. So um, yeah, it is what it is. You know, like as I said, keep an eye out for the vlog on Shamrock's YouTube page. It'll yeah. be out soon. Um, and yeah, I expect that there's a few fights that have, have been uh, set That's in terms of a in narrative. That. Yeah, oh, yeah. they'll be set in terms of a narrative um, for the future. But uh, as actually, I said, actually, for now it's for now it's Callum Mullen only. Yeah, I had uh, I had Akon on a couple of days ago because I've just got a ton of the boys off this. Yeah, I mean, I had him on for a quick half an hour chat. And I said to him, what's the script? I was like, what's going on between you two, mate? Because you two are just flying at each other. Like, when did this rivalry mm-hmm. fucking start? And uh, I asked him as well, would he ever fight you? And he said he would. He was like, it went back to uh, when when you were doing the challenger, I think it was. He said, like, there was some beef there as well. And it was listen, there, like, cool. Listen, at the end of the day, yeah, I come from a culture. Like, I know today's day and age, 2024, all this. We have all this liberal nonsense going on. But um, in my culture, on both sides of my family, my mum's from Eastern Europe, my dad's from West Africa. Um, I've recently convert, um, reverted to Islam myself. Mm-hmm. The kind of stuff he does in his life are immoral. They're not, you know, you're selling your soul, basically. Um, you know, he's doing a P. Diddy out here, you know. Um, did he do Mills. it? Mills. Yeah. yeah. He, he, he definitely Try did do it, mate, you know. I know, yeah, he's, I know. Um, so, 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 yeah, like, uh, hmm. Yeah, like I, I don't respect Akon as a, as a, as a male, as a man, you know, um, you know, as a fighter, he has a little skill set, uh, and that fight will happen, but um, I think he's gonna avoid it as long as he can, um, but it will have to happen, whether it's later this year or early next year, it'll have to happen at some point, you know, it has to get settled, um. Yeah, I think I butcher him to be honest. Uh, for where he is, I think, in his I think a lot of people would love to see it, mate. I said the same to him. I think there'd be a lot of fans that'd be dying to see that fight as well, just oh, with the beef what? and all the story that there is to tell with that there now. One hundred percent. I don't think I don't think he'd last a camp against me though, because I have way too much stuff on him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, and obviously, you know, given my recent revert re- revertal, um, I kind of have to leave some of that stuff out, but for uh for him it's it's a long time for him um i know i'm in his head already as it is uh, every yeah. time he gets interviewed he gets asked about me and i know that that irks mm-hmm. him deep inside it irks him that yeah. uh, every time he's on an interview every time he does a bit of media someone asks him about me so it, you can see it on his face his reaction Your name pops up everywhere bro you know and uh he just hates the fact that a guy who's two and two and two that was basically fighting on a show he coached on mm-hmm. is being spoken in the same breath as him and he's seven and one or seven and two or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. Looking forward to it, mate. Can't wait for that one to get made up. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, right. We got Octagon, uh, 56 in Birmingham, April 20th, mate. Honestly, I'm buzzing. I can't wait to get there. This card is absolutely stacked, bro. Stacked, like, stacked. mate. Stacked, mate. It's heavy. heavy right? card, they're, heavy they're saying they're going to be doing two more cards in the UK this year as well, and I'm just like, how are you going to top this one? Even like, yeah, they need to, they need to forget about that and do a fucking Irish card. Do you know what I mean? Because uh, yeah, we're wild, listen, our, Ireland and the UK are very different places. You know, uh, mm-hmm. put a load of Irish fighters on an Irish card, and you'll you'll actually fill out an arena. You know what I mean? Yeah. You'll actually be able to fill out an arena. But mm-hmm. um, let's see if they do it. I just need to keep winning, and. Uh, Showing them, and then they'll put me on that. Put me as a headliner, you know. Yeah. Let's be let's be honest. Uh, with the Irish fighters, other than Will Flurry now. I mean, Will Flurry's a big name, so mm. I won't take that respect uh, respect away from him. But I was 
I was the one who opened the door. I kicked the door down for Irish yeah. fighters to start coming in here, start talking trash, doing what we do, and then smoking these Eastern Europeans. So put me and him on the main card, get a few of the other Irish up and comers on there. Yeah. Um, and you'll sell, you, you, you'll, you'll sell out an arena easy. I think, I think the more people see what they're doing from the UK and Ireland, the more people that are going to want to get signed by Octagon. I think they're catching eyes, you know what I mean? So I think they're definitely going to be wanting people to come over. And they, they, they're going to need it to build their brand over here as well. You know what I mean, obviously, they're, they're massive in Europe, mate, but to bring it over 100%. here, they're going to need to start winding up some more of these boys. 100%. 100%. So why, what, what did you get up to in Stuttgart then? Well, I'm, again, butchering it, but... We just done we just done some uh, media obligations, um, mm. you know, the press conference, bit of filming. Obviously, I think they brought me over because they knew that there was going to be a bit of beef and they'd get some yeah. content out of it. But it is what it is. Uh, yeah, we went to watch the fights. Um, Christian Youngworth's walkout was sick. Probably the best walkout I've seen live, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, had like fifteen thousand people all singing his walkout song. And again, it just made me think to if you could get a card going in Dublin or Belfast, get that whole Irish crowd singing. Yeah. You know, even if it was a 5,000 seater, we'd top that 15,000 Germans mm. singing. You know what I mean? Everyone knows the Irish are rowdy. And oh, loud, get loud as own. fuck, mate. Yeah, 100%. You know what I mean, you can hear you coming a fucking mile off. <laughs> it's fucking unreal. But now, nah, I, bet, I bet even just sitting in there and experiencing that and thinking about it, imagining it being you walking out and hearing that must just yeah. fucking pump you up, yeah. mate. You must get tingles sitting there thinking about that. Yeah. Like. yeah. And then obviously they announced the, the Frankfurt card, 55,000 seater. Yeah. And I, and I know over, over there fighting a German getting booed by 55,000 mm -hmm. people that 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 gets my blood flowing just as much as yeah. having you know thousands of people singing for me and cheering me either mm -hmm. way you know you're going to be making noise in it yeah that's it mate so well, i would say two weeks out now so we're getting fucking dialed in almost there you got you got a prediction for this fight or you're not you're not a prediction man i am a prediction man i predict violence um <laughs> bl blood yeah blood will be shed in that cage Every set of shorts I've ever worn for Octagon has had blood on it, whether it's my blood or the other guy's blood. Mm. But there's going to be blood. Um, and I, I predict a knockout as well, an early yeah. knockout. So, are you, any of these fights you're looking forward to after yours to just sit and chill? Obviously, Shem, do you know what I mean? You're probably the one for that one. But... Will, Will Flurry, James Hendon and Jakob Dona is a sick fight. Mm. Um, obviously, I want to see what what George does. Um, you know, he's, he's, the guy he's fighting is not great, but... You know, like uh, that one back. at some point, at some point, oh. down the line, down the line, you know what I mean? Give me a bit of time to get me wrestling. But as I said, I'm still a baby in the game. I'm still a beginner in my yeah. head. He's been doing it since he's a kid. So let me get my wrestling up and uh, maybe down the line we'll get it back. But I want to see what he does to this Thomas fella. Mm -hmm. I want to know what they do, what they've done to get Sam Creasy to come over to Octagon from Cage Warriors, mate. I mean, obviously just lost his title and that, and now it's a, a shot, a shot at another title. But to come over and have this fight with uh, with Az, mate, that's one hell of a match. Mate, up, like. listen, they need to. Obviously, they they, they they threw a bit of money at him. I need them to throw some of that money my way. You get yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just get this one under your belt, mate, and move on to the next one. You get your face in that fifty-five thousand fucking arena, and there can't it. say can't That's say it. no to it. Then can they? You can buy yeah. all the fucking venison you want, then, mate. <laughs> oh mate, I'll buy, I'll buy a whole fucking deer, mate. <laughs> yeah. So what what's the intensity for you right now? Is it absolutely flying through the roof, or are you you starting to bring it down a little bit and just work? No, nah, la work last uh, last week week and a bit of uh, hard work. Next week, next shoes are going to be my last bars, and then we're going to from that point we're going to slowly start bringing it down. Then wait cut week and then go to them, have some fun. Nice, yeah. I can't wait, mate. Honestly, even the fucking press conference on the Friday is going to be absolutely insane. Like, probably won't even get a word in. Like, yeah, somebody will ask one question and that'll be it. You'll just go. Ah, right. mate. Listen, Akon's getting something thrown at his head, mate. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, don't be ruining it. You know what I mean? Don't be, uh, don't be potentially stopping any nah, nah, of nah. these fights, bro. You know nah, I mean? nah, 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 nah. Just nah, ver nah, verbal. It'll only be a Jaffa cake, mate. 
Oh, he no. loves Jaffa cakes, doesn't he? Yeah, so I know he does. Mate. So he, 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 he was telling me, telling me about a Jaffa cake challenge, and he was like, "Yeah, I managed five in a minute." And I was like, "Sound, I'm going to give it a go." And he was like, "If you can get six, then we're having a little Jaffa cake eat off after his fight." I was like, Sound. Five? Wait, did you say five Jaffa cakes in Bro, a minute?" Bro, I'm, I'm telling you, mate, go and try it. It's not as easy as you think. I managed six mate, in a minute. Mate, I could scran about 12 in a minute, mate. Are you mad? Nah, the world record, Guinness world records, 13. Go and do it, bro. I'm telling you. I'm telling Jaffa you now. cakes, mate. Jaffa, mate, Jaffa cakes, cakes mate. are like this size. Oh, yeah, but do you know how spongy it is? It dries your mouth out like that, bro. I'm telling bro, you, go and get bro, it. I'm, bro, I'm telling you now. For, <laughs> you have not seen what I'm like after a week. Like, see, after the week after a fight. Oh, uh -huh. mate. They'll get, they'll get you. I'll do yeah. it. In fact, I'll do it and I'll smoke Akon. I'll get it on video and I'll put a vlog out. Yeah, we'll fucking do that. Then I said to him, because yeah. you know, he said, if I get six, then me and him are having the challenge. But I'll say, do you know what? You and fucking, you and Frim are going to have the challenge now. Nah, I'm just going to, I'm just going to knock him out, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mate, I'm telling you, go give that a go. It's not as easy as you fucking think it would be. I like. can't, I can't now, but after the fight, I will. And I get on video, yeah. mate, yeah. I swear to God, go send me that because it's not your fucking jaw I'll starts just, uh, cramping mate, that. Mate, yeah. I'll just do three at a time in that, bro. I'm not hurt, mate. Oh, no, it needs to be one and then gone. That's the challenge. One and it needs to be out your mouth. You need to go like, ah, it's gone. And then next one, ah, gone. Next one, I'm telling you, bro. Yeah, mate, I'll just, I'm, trust me. I'm, yeah. Yeah, animal. I'm a, a, I'm, a any... si I'm a sick machine, mate, when it comes to eating, lad. There's an eating challenge at a pub near me, and I'm fucking choking on going and giving it a go, mate, because I'm a fat bastard. I'm probably six foot one and skinny as fuck walking because I'm so tall, but, mate, I can eat, mate, like, I swear to God. Skinny it's boys like, can eat, bro. Skinny that's boys it, can mate. eat. That's it, mate. That's it. I sit at the end of the table going, you finish with that? Yeah, you finish with that? Yeah, pass that down here whenever I go out for dinner, like, fucking unreal. Okay. But uh, like you said, mate, you've got some other interviews coming up, and I'll, I'll let you get away because obviously you've got training and everything. Uh, no happening, but no Can't worries, wait mate. to see you in Birmingham, mate. Can't wait to fucking get into this press conference, it. get stuck into these fights, it. and obviously get some questions in. So thanks for your time, mate. 100%. All the best over the next couple of weeks. Uh, shout, give your fucking socials a shout out. Yeah, I mean, you're already killing the game, but let's Yeah, Dennis Frimpong MMA. I'm on TikTok and all that. If you look up Dennis Frimpong, there's there's only really one Dennis Frimpong. One N, by the way. And um, yeah, obviously give my YouTube a follow, TikTok, all that. They're Instagram, they're the only ones I really use. Um, don't add me on Facebook unless you know me because I'm not going to accept you. Yeah. Um, and yeah, um, tune into the fight. Pay-per-view on Octagon TV, Channel 4, The Zone. And if you need a ticket, shout me on my socials and i'll sort you out a ticket as well got stands floor and vip be there at b square sick card you're gonna see really violent fights so boom mate what a delivery fucking done it better than i could have anyway <laughs> right mate i'll let you get away top man thanks nice for coming one, on today bro appreciate it lad. go on lad. legend mate take it easy